Good morning. Good to be with you today as we continue in our study of God's Word. Uh, last week we were in the third chapter of Genesis and we were witness to the fall of man, the sin uh, that Adam and Eve committed and now uh, we are uh, the result of that, of that sin. We suffer as a result of their disobedience. Today we skip forward because it's Christmas week to cover the second chapter of Luke's gospel and in that second chapter we find the beginning of God's plan for redemption. So today we begin in the first verse. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. The first uh, census, so this indicates that there were others. Uh, the Jews, uh, anyone that had been under rule hated census. They they hated the Roman census because what it was was a head count for purposes of taxation or it was for purposes of identifying men that could serve in the military. And Mary went with them because all women uh, had to register as well if, if they were over 12 years old. But I suspect too that since it was... Uh, uh, in the later stages of Mary's pregnancy that Joseph didn't want to leave her at home by herself and go uh, for the census. So they left. Uh, uh, Quirinius uh, probably was the governor for two terms. He uh, served uh, from six to four B.C. and then 6 to 7 or 9 A.D. And Jesus was born during this, this first census between 6 and 4. And of course we see there a discrepancy between the recorded birth of Jesus and the ruling of or when Caesar Augustus and Herod were ruling. Uh, I'm confident that when all of this uh, plays out that Luke will be accurate because he historically is very accurate in everything he says. So in verse 3, and everyone went to his own town to register. This would uh, fulfill prophecy as well as uh, the what the governor said do go to your your hometown as it was so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to G Judea to Bethlehem the town of David because he belonged to the house and the line of David this was as prophesied in Micah he went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. So she was as round as, as a ladybug and, and we, we uh, understand that she rode on a donkey and uh, Joseph walked beside her leading the donkey. Uh, this was a, an excruciating trip, probably taking uh, several days. It was a 90 mile trip and, and this was very hard on Mary to make that trip while she was expecting a child. And then in verse 6 it says, while they were there a time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn a son. So this indicates, of course, that there were other children that were to be 
uh, born to Joseph and Mary. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Uh, the, the community was packed and there was no room in the end. Uh, people were visiting, others were there, they were coming for the census. And so uh, Jesus and Mary found what amounted to a stable and he was placed in a manger. Now this could have been a cave that was cut out of of rock, it could have been man-made, it could well have been a home. At that time, there were homes that were two stories, and the lower level was for the animals, and the second level was where members of the family uh, slept, and they often slept on a roof of that, of that structure. So he was wrapped as he typically as children typically were in, in claws, and, and this not only kept the, the limbs straight, but also kept the child warm. She wrapped him in claws and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Shepherds would recognize that as the place. And then in verse 8, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. This is what they did. And this uh, particular group of shepherds, as tradition holds it, were raising uh, sheep for sacrifice. Uh, this was, uh, there were several flocks, several shepherds, and they were out uh, watching over their flocks, protecting them from uh, predators, animals, or thieves that would come to steal. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Well, I would expect so. These were, were shepherds. They were they were the downcast, they were the unclean in that society, and, and they were out just doing their job, and all of a sudden, uh, an angel appeared, and that would have been Gabriel, and, and the Lord's light, the glory of the Lord, shone around them, and, and you would expect they would be terrified uh, out in the fields, tending their flocks, a dark as pitch, and all of a sudden, the glory of the Lord appears to them. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. So there are several things in that. In when it says the good news, we're speaking of the gospel of great joy, and when this term is used in, in Scripture here, in, in, at least in Luke's gospel, it refers to salvation. That will be for all the people. Uh, here, uh, it is not directed just to kings or leaders or the Sanhedrin or the Pharisees, but for all people, not only the leadership, but for the least and the last and the lost. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. So we see here in this gospel where the Messiah is referred to as Savior, salvation, God's plan for redemption for his people that we read about back in Genesis was uh, in sin, 
uh, the serpent led them into sin. And now, hundreds of years later, God has begun a plan of redemption. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths that is, that is lying in a manger. And this was a, a common practice. And this would have been the first sign. The second sign appears in the next verse. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to men on whom his favor rests. And I am always struck by this, this great company of heavenly hosts. This would have been tens of thousands, an army of of people, angels, beings, uh, praising God, saying glory to God in the highest. Not just good to good people, but to all people, to men on whom his favor rests. What a great day. That What an incredible day that must have been as as the shepherds were uh, doing their job out in the field, protecting their sheep, and, and the angel and the host of heavenly hosts appear. And then in verse 15, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, and the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Not the leaders again, not special people, not the Sanhedrin, but to the shepherds, the despised, the downcast, the least, the last, and the lost. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. So this required some effort on their part to travel, to walk, uh, to find what had happened. And they found Mary and Joseph and the baby. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. And I find it interesting that this event, this birth of the Savior, this birth of the Messiah, in Luke's gospel, the actual birth is, is covered only by two verses. Uh, Luke is given to brevity, and certainly he is now, but, but the expanded version of what happened is told in recording what, what the shepherds did. Now, Herod knew about this event, but he chose not to go, certainly a part of God's planning about who is to learn of the baby's birth. The shepherds, these, I imagine, quiet men that, that lived in the field and tended shepherds, but, but when they had seen the Messiah, they spread the word. They told everyone that they knew all that they had heard and they were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Uh, they were amazed. And then in the 19th verse, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. I imagine she was a little bit overwhelmed by 
what had just occurred. I'm sure that she didn't quite understand the magnitude of how she had been blessed and the fact that she had just given birth to the Savior, to the Messiah, to the Son of God who was to bring salvation to the world. Mary treasured up all of these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds return, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Just as God had said, it had occurred. They could never be the same again. Life could not go on as it had in the past. And I just pray that, that we would do the same. Let's go out and tell the good news that Jesus Christ is born. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this special time of year, this Christmas season, this celebration of this magnificent event that our Lord and Savior has been born. And Father, we pray for our, our church and, our, and its leadership and for our community leaders. We pray for those that are traveling, for those that might be ill. Oh, Father, we thank you for Jesus and pray that we would do as the shepherd did uh, to tell all that they had heard and all that they had seen. And we pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. God bless you and Merry Christmas to you and those you love.